Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. And what is this video about? Well, we're going to try and make our own reverbs, but you know, they're going to be pretty grungy, lo-fi reverbs, but they're going to be ours. How can we make our own reverbs? Why would we want to make our own reverbs? There's like a load of reverbs on the internet that I could download for free or buy, or I could just use the one in Ableton. Yeah, you could. Or you can kind of make your own weird ones, experimental ones, and then they'll sound like yours. And that's kind of nice. We all like to have our own little stamp of identity on our work. And the concept is quite straightforward. We're just going to use a load of delays. I'm going to use Ableton stock delays and stack a load of them up, uh, slightly offset each of their delay times and experiment with filtering and various things to basically create spaces. Obviously Ableton's reverb is very good. Um, I use it all the time. It's probably the only one I use actually. But sometimes it's a little bit lacking in texture. It tends to just sort of have its own sound. And as good as that sounds, it's just, it's a little samey for me sometimes. And obviously there's a whole load of reverbs that I've got in VSTs and ones that I could probably buy if I wanted to. But I quite like making my own sometimes. And I'm going to show you some of those ideas and then you can try them yourself or don't and just buy a reverb. It's up to you. So I've got here a drum loop from my doubles sample pack, which is available now on my Gumroad. I'll put a link in the description. This is just a very dry kind of dubby drum beat thing. I played <laughs> on the drums. Anyway, so let's start with just the regular delay. So I'll put the delay on a return. I'll whack up the dry wet. This delay is fun because you can switch between the various modes here. These modes can have a quite drastic impact on the sound of the delay when you start to adjust the delay time. I'm going to turn sync off. And for now, I'm just going to put the time down to one millisecond. I'm going to whack the feedback up. And I'm going to put a limiter on this send because I want to feed it back into itself later on. So I've enabled the send here. I mean, it says disable, but that's because I've already enabled it. So I can feed it back into itself and create all kinds of hell. So let's just have a listen to that as we bust that in. It's going to sound pretty... Gonna, that sounds pretty harsh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack these up. I'm going to group them uh, and then I'm going to stack them up. But each instance of the delay, I'm going to give a different delay time to the previous one. And really, that's kind of how basic reverb algorithms work. They're essentially just a load of very, very small delay lines. But each delay time is sort of slightly different to the other one. Um, and then they're kind of summed back together. And there's some filtering at the start, at the end, and sometimes in the loop. And that's why I've decided to do this on a return track with the send enabled so that I can experiment with that feeding back. So first of all, I'm just gonna map some parameters. I'll do the delay time. And I could use the filter as well. Uh, yeah, let's use the filter. So I'll map the filter frequency and the width to some knobs here and I might do the feedback uh, the freeze the freeze is fun well it's a kind of a loop but you can call it freeze what does that say there this parameter is controlled by macro oh that's fine and then I might map the mode as well um, and we could just let's just map everything let's just map a lot okay so now that I've done that I'm going to go into the map editor and the chain editor I'm going to duplicate this chain uh, maybe five times. You could do as many as you want. I'm just going to go with five for now. And then I need to find the parameter that's the delay. Here we go. So I'm just going to give these random different values roughly the same distance apart, but not exactly. Um, so the, the first one will keep at one milliseconds. The second one will go for like 2.3. This one will go for 3.5. This one for 4.7, this one for 5.9, okay? Just random numbers, but they're kind of equally distance apart. 
but not quite. And everything else will share the same mapping. Okay, let's have a listen to this. Let's see what this sounds like. Okay, so that sounds a little bit resonant. That sounds a little bit resonant right now, but as I start to play with the delay time, There we go. That sounds reverby. It probably, by today's standards, sounds like a reverb from a Zoom unit from 1992. But I'm okay with that because I used to love those old Zoom guitar effects things. I always, I always wanted a Zoom 4040 when I was 14 years old. I still look at Google images of that sometimes and get excited. Oh yeah. Okay, so we'll just play around with some parameters here and uh, see what we can do with the sound. So some of them are going to sound very glitchy and not very good, but I'm okay with that because it's it gives texture. I quite like that kind of glitch digital texture, if you haven't noticed from most of my work. So with the freeze, we can kind of lock the reverb. There we go. That sounds fun, doesn't it? Let's turn that down. So we've kind of frozen. It's kind of like the reverb freeze in the normal reverb. And then once we've done that, we can kind of screw around with the delay once it's frozen or locked, looped, whatever. We get these kind of textures. It's pretty quiet. Maybe, whoa. Um, I'll maybe just compress it quite aggressively so we can sort of hear it a bit better. Uh, we can change the delay mode to like re-pitch so it does that thing. Let's unfreeze it. that snare frozen in our this is fun listen to that <laughs> oh. okay let's try that ping pong thing okay a bit of space uh, stereo space there You can, of course, just keep adding more chains if you want to make your reverb a little bit more, I don't know, just a little bit more, a little bit more. Uh, so we'll just find that last one we did. Okay, so for this one, we'll go for 6.6. .6. This one will go for 7.9. This one will go for 8.5. And this one will go for 9.3. Yeah, it's just going to thicken it up even more. You can, of course, do this in any program that allows you to stack up uh, multiple delays. Um, they're not in series, they're in parallel. So you need to have a program that will allow you to do that. Ableton makes this quite easy. Maybe other programs do too. I don't know. So as we pull the feedback down, we get less decay time.
So there you go. That was uh, pretty cool. It's this little custom reverb that we made, you know. I mean, it's obviously not the world's most amazing sounding reverb, but there's a lot of tweakability there. You can do stuff with it to maybe make it sound a little bit more interesting. You could put, like, an erosion after it and uh, feed it back through the erosion. Oh my gosh. It all got a little bit crazy, but it's okay. We're back. We're back. We're back. Okay, so I'll do a new one now. Create a new return track. And I'll try it with uh, maybe a different delay. Um, I mean, there's quite a few delays to choose from. We could try the filter delay. Um, I wasn't too interested in that when I practiced this. So um, I try the try the grain delay. This one worked quite well. So I'm basically just going to apply exactly the same concept. So I'll maybe put a limiter on just to, <clears throat> when I feed it back, it's all safe. Um, so let's just do the this exact same thing again. Let's repeat the process. So let's just map some stuff. First of all, I think, I'll, well, we want to unsync it and we want to work in milliseconds. So let's map the milliseconds and then let's map the feedback. I'm just going to map everything. The random pitch will be fun. The pitch, let's just do the lot. Frequency and spray. Um, yeah, that all looks okay to me. The dry wet can just stay up full. Um, all right, so let's duplicate that five times. What did I do? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's go to this chain. Let's find the delay time. Okay. So this one we'll do for 2.5. Again, I'm just doing random numbers, doesn't matter. Uh, 5.9, yeah. I think those are ex exactly the same numbers I did before. Okay, let's listen to this. See what this is like. Oh, wrong, wrong one, okay. Okay, interesting. Okay. Okay. Why don't I bust myself into it? There we go. <laughs> so we're probably, it might be a good idea to, I skipped this in the previous delay, um, to look at doing some input and output processing, perhaps with some filters. So I'll put a filter at the front and at the back, just for now. So this one I'll have, um, well, I suppose it doesn't really matter. I'll just leave them as they are for now. Let's have a listen. Okay. Let's try the random pitch. Okay, so this is when I was thinking it might be a good idea to have some input processing. So I'm gonna high pass the input just a bit and we might maybe need to high pass it on the way out as well because it's a bit boomy. This one's a bit boomy. So obviously as... Oh, hello. Thanks. snapped out of that vision I was just having. Uh, what on earth was I doing? Oh yeah, so I want to um, do the same thing with the delay time, but with the pitch on this one. So I'm just gonna get these two pitches here and maybe pull this one back a bit. Oh no, let's do it with this one. Do this one up one notch, this one down, this one up two, this one down two, this one up three, this one down three, this one up 
four, this one down four, this one. Oh, that's it. That's it. Okay. So yeah, what I've done is I've just created a bit of a sort of split there with the pitch. There we go. I mean, that's very experimental and strange. But... feed this one back into itself. Yeah, I like that one. I want to hear my mic through the first one. Whoa. That was scary. Sorry about that. Things because that compresses a bit, a bit high. Hello. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Sounds all right. Hello. Yeah, lo-fi kind of retro fifties B movie kind of reverb. I like it. Okay, let's try one more. Uh, let's maybe use the. We could use. Oh, I'll turn that off now. Okay. Um, we could maybe. We could use the echo. Obviously, the echo's got a reverb built into it. And um, as, as much as I love the echo, a lot of the work is done for you. Um, nothing wrong with that. It's a good go-to plugin for quick ideas. But uh, I want to go into a little bit more depth today. So we could try the chorus or the flanger. Um, I might go with the flanger. Oh, I want to do it with corpus as well later, which is kind of the two combined. Let's go with the flanger. So again, it's exactly the same approach. I'll just group the flanger and decide what macros I want. The thing about the flanger and as well as the chorus is that we've got some modulation capabilities of the delay time and flangers and choruses obviously work on very, very, very fast delay times. I mean, yeah, this one's this one maxes out at seven milliseconds. Um, so we can be a little bit more precise with our delay time offsetting or separation or whatever you want to call it. Um, so for now, I'll turn down the amount <clears throat> and I'll start with, and also yeah, we've got this envelope as well, which is quite, quite fun. So I'll start with uh, mapping the delay time and I'll map the high pass as well, just to see what we get. I'm going to keep the feedback at full. I'll map the, whatever that is, the plus or minus, I guess that's the coefficient or something. I don't know. Um, we'll map the LFO amount the LFO rate. Don't really want the phase up. Oh yeah, of course. The other thing I forgot to mention as well is that um, when you do these in effects racks, you can of course pan them. You can have all the different delays panned however you want. There's just lots of, you know, there's a rabbit hole to go down. That's what I'm saying. And it's a, it's a rewarding rabbit hole. Okay. Let's try the envelope and the attack of the envelope and the release of the envelope. That'll do. We've maxed out those macros now. Okay, so let's duplicate that chain. Maybe let's go for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, uh, let's jump into the map mapping editor. Okay, so we're going to have to go in floating point numbers. Um, let's go for 0 0.25. Uh, oh, what did I just do that? 0 0.25. Okay, this one will go for 0 0.36. This one for 0 0.47. You can see the little pattern of numbers I'm doing. It doesn't matter. Oh, I'm doing the wrong bloody parameter. Silly me. It's this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, that needs to go back down to 0. Okay. You know what? I'm just going to click and drag. Just click and drag. 
Just three. One with a three, one with a four. That might be a bit too far. We'll see how we get on. Five, and there's one for six something. So seven, six point six. Okay. Let's see what that sounds like. Oh, we're still going to the, the other one. Let's have a listen. Whoa! Sorry, everyone. Don't worry, I've got my limiter on the master. That's why That's why I put the limiter on the master bus, people. Okay? For all of you who called out my limiter on the master bus, that's exactly why I put it there. So when stuff like that happens, we can all live to see another day. Okay, there was one thing I forgot to do was to assign the LFO to a, a random sample and hold type thing. So I can go copy value to siblings and put the rate to full and just a tiny little bit of LFO amount. Let's hear, hear it with the mic. Ooh. Yeah, it's, I mean, obviously it's experimental reverb, but it sounds all right to me. Hello. Oh, sorry. Sorry, everyone. Okay. Yeah, that sounds all right. I mean, it's a very, that's a very, very tiny, tiny little tube of a reverb. That's like a, that's a, a, a mouse reverb. You know, when a mouse is going down a little, um, you know, little pipe. That's that's what the mouse is when it's pitter pattering. That's what it is. <laughs> okay. So I added a little bit of envelope modulation there and you can hear how much it kind of just moshed it out a bit. And then again, we can experiment with some input filtering and output filtering. So I'll just um, make this a bit smaller. Okay. And, you know, it's a choice between whether you go to low pass or high pass on the way in or way out or whatever, but... Sometimes I think it's quite nice to high pass on the way in and low pass on the way out. Yeah, see what I mean? Yeah. Remember, these are experimental reverbs. Um, I'm going to do one last one now. Well, actually, I wanted to do it with the chorus. Um, just try it with the chorus. I want to do it with corpus. Corpus is awesome. Um, obviously, with corpus, we've got like so many, so many options. I mean, it's kind of almost a reverb in itself. It's a resonator, you know, and the two are on the same sort of side of the acoustic coin. <laughs> so, I mean, straight away, if we bust this drum loop into corpus, we get these tiny resonances, but if we um, if we pull the, the tuning down, okay. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be quite quick with this because I've been going a while now. So um, let's group this, and uh, let me just chuck a limiter on here and. Um, Let's decide what we're going to, let's do the tuning. Let's map the tune. Let's map the decay, although that's maybe likely to change depending on the type of um, algorithm we use. No, they all have decay. Okay, that's fine. So we'll go with decay and we'll map the 
um, well, yeah, we'll map the algorithm. The th this material sometimes changes depending on what type of algorithm with you. Oh, there's some things here. Okay. So let's just do the thing again. Duplicate the chains maybe five times. Go into the map. Find our, uh, no, our tune. Okay, so it goes down to minus 60. I'm just going to have to choose random numbers because I don't know what these numbers mean. But I'm going to keep them reasonably close together. Uh, let's put this one to like 17. Okay. I'll maybe just max them out. Slightly offset as well. Doesn't really matter. I'm just jamming. Okay. Whoa, I'll we'll keep doing that. Right, let's have a listen. Okay, I'm definitely going to filter on the way in with this one. I'll do uh, a high pass and uh, I'll chuck one on the end. Low pass on the, on the way out. Okay, let's have a listen. Okay, so yeah, we can obviously try different uh, resonator types. I love about it is that you can drastically change the reverb time and modulate the crap out of it to make this weird kind of metaphysical sort of pan dimensional kind of space compression time expansion. I don't know. side of a I don't know a big 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 boat now it's a really tiny boat now it's nothing it's gone This is the tube. Let's see what it's like with my voice. Hello? Let's do all of them with my voice. Hello, everyone. Ah. Thank you for watching my video about making your own reverbs. I hope that you enjoyed it. So yeah, try that. Get a load of delays and stack them all up, offset their delay times, and uh, play around with some stuff. Put like weird effects in the feedback loop, like a, like a redux or like overdrive or like beat repeat or something, you know. You could also like fire off an impulse um, or like a kick drum or a clap sound through your own reverb, sample it and then load it in your convolution reverb. And then you've kind of got your own impulse response all completely synthetic, you know, nothing against recording impulse responses in real acoustic spaces. I think that's a very admirable practice and I wish I could make more time for it, but I don't have the time right now. Well, actually I do have the time. I just don't really know where to go because I guess everything's closed. I was quite, quite keen on the idea of going down to the caves in Dorset and popping a few balloons and recording some caves, but 
I've no idea when I'll ever do that. So for now, I'm just going to synthesize my own reverbs. I'm going to go and put this set on my Patreon right now. So if you're currently subscribing on Patreon, you can download that. Or if you'd like to support me on Patreon and download this set and every set that I put on there for now until I'm probably dead, then you can do that. And it all goes towards, well, it doesn't really go towards anything right now. Apart from the occasional beer. So thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed that. See you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>